Hello and welcome to my first ever YouTube video tutorial. Uh, my name is Juan and I'm a visual and UX designer and front-end developer. Um, and I'll be making more videos like this. But as you might have seen from the title of this video, uh, we're going to be working on an advanced tooltip component uh, that we'll later use in a pretty advanced and responsive um, form. And so this video is the first part of a four-part mini-series. Um, but before we get started, I just kind of wanted to go ahead and show first uh, what we're going to be building in this video and also in the later videos um, and why I think this little tooltip is so advanced um, and just really fun and cool to use. Uh, so we'll go uh, here into the project file, which I'll include in the link to the description. Um, this file is the beta component library for my personal design system that I hope to make available for others to use um, here in the next few months. Um, but in the example page, um, we'll see the little form that we're going to be building. Um, and you'll see that probably for most designers, what they would do if they had a little tooltip they needed uh, for this icon is they would come into the assets panel and then either go to their components um, or search for the tooltip and then just drag it in um, and then move it and put it right where they need it to go. Uh, so we'll zoom in here um, and then we'll type the username gets longer. Um, so then they suddenly have to move the tooltip and just sort of keep realigning it and positioning it, make sure it's the right space apart. Um, and I think that's fine for most use cases. Um, I do that a lot, but I just kind of want to see if there was a way to take this little tooltip uh, component further. So just on the right here, I have another example. Um, and I thought, well, why don't we uh, put the tooltip component and the icon in an auto layout together so they're always uh, going to be in the right position relative to each other, um, no matter, you know, where the icon is moved. So I uh, created that exactly, and then I have a little toggle here that turns it on and off. Oh, but then we see that the tooltip actually disrupts the flow of the auto layout since it takes space within the uh, container frame. And so what we're actually going to do is if we take this little tooltip icon and command click it, and then for this one, turn the visibility on, we'll see that, oh, wow, it uh, seems to be floating above our other inputs here. And so we'll just go ahead and type in here to see what happens uh, when the text gets longer. And we'll see that it still maintains all of that awesome auto layoutness um, without disrupting the rest of the uh, form's flow. Um, and this is really cool because it sort of acts like a pseudo element might encode. Um, and this gives us a lot of flexibility with layouts. So this is just one example of how this technique can be used. Um, but I just want to give a little overview of what we're going to be building in the uh, later episodes of this mini series. Um, and that's this form, which as you can see is fully responsive here. Um, but then let's just say that we had a really small screen, something like the iPhone 12 mini. Well, then suddenly this uh, text here inside these inputs, it seems um, maybe a little bit too narrow for a screen that size. So we can actually come in and select these uh, components. And then we'll see we're using this idea of an input text group. And we'll change that to vertical. And then our little form resizes, and they automatically adjust to be full width. And we actually have the same thing with our buttons. If we want to do something similar like that, uh, we could achieve the same effect. Uh, but we'll get more into all of that in a later video. But if that sounds awesome, then stick around and we'll uh, get to building it. So let's get started with building our little tooltip. Uh, we're going to go to the demo page here. You might not have this page in the final file. I just created it for the tutorial. Uh, but the first thing that we're going to do is create our little uh, body for our tooltip, and that's going to be with a text layer here. So we're just going to type on the canvas, cool tip, tooltip. Awesome. 
And so now we're gonna give this a little auto layout so that it grows with the content. Uh, and we're just gonna adjust the padding here to be 12 top and bottom, and then 16 on the sides there. And we'll go ahead and make sure that the content stays centered, um, which really isn't gonna affect things too much for this component. I just kind of like to have things centered when possible. Um, okay, so from here, we're gonna go ahead and give this um, text a color. Uh, so we'll just command click it and then choose text arc from the side panel there in the color styles. Um, and then for the background, we'll give that a fill uh, of gray one, just so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, and then a border radius of eight pixels. So we'll actually also change this textile to just be body here. Cool, so now that we have that, um, we can go ahead and create the little tooltip pointer. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle here that's 28 by 10 pixels. Uh, these are some specs I've already predefined before the tutorial, um, just so that I would remember. And I'm gonna draw a little box here that's four pixels by four pixels, duplicate it on the side there. Um, and then we're gonna use the pen tool to draw this little pointer. So what we can do is just hit the P key uh, to bring out the pen tool or access it from the toolbar. And then we'll just click here to add these points that we need. Um, and then we're try to get it pretty centered there. Uh, and then come back, oops, sorry, we'll come back here and then off to the right. And then we're actually gonna bring this back over and connect it right there so that we close this path. And let's just double check, make sure that everything is nice and centered. Uh, we'll go ahead and click done at the top. We'll bring this back over, bring it on the top, change the color so we can see it. I'm just rotating this 45 degrees. Just double double check that um, this is pretty centered here. Um, and it looks like it is. Um, yeah, because the angles are the same there. So that's perfect. Cool, so now that we have that, we'll just duplicate this and click Shift X on our keyboard. And what that's gonna do is swap the stroke that we had and make it a fill. Uh, and we'll go ahead and change this to the gray one color as well. Um, and we're gonna just double click into here, select these two points on our path, give it a radius of 24 pixels on the right, and then we'll select the bottom point, give it a radius of four pixels, um, and then we're done. So this is our little tooltip pointer. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit extra space that's not being used uh, from when we rounded it. So we can duplicate that once again. Just gonna bring it down here. And then there's a keyboard shortcut to help flatten this, so that's Command E. And that's gonna allow the bounding box to actually uh, fit the content that we have visible. Cool, so now we're gonna just bring that over here with our tooltip. Um, and there we have it. We have the little tooltip. I'm gonna just center that. Um, but then as you can see, if we type, the little pointer doesn't move with it. So what we're gonna do is create an auto layout around both of these. And we can do that in the right panel or with the shortcut Shift A. Um, and then we'll center so that it stays in the middle there. Um, but then as you can see, if we needed it to be left aligned for some reason, um, that there's this weird thing going on. And so what we're gonna do is create an auto layout around this um, and reset some of these settings here and then click into here and give it eight pixels padding on the left and eight pixels on the right. And that'll just help push the, the little pointer so that it matches nicely with the radius of the tooltip body. Cool. So we'll go ahead and center this. Um, and now from here, we can actually turn this into a component. So the way we're gonna do that is uh, by doing the keyboard shortcut command option K, or optionally it can be accessed from the toolbar at the top. Uh, and then we're just gonna name this tooltip demo. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this uh, just so that we can start working on the rest of it. So now we're gonna try to bring in that little info icon. So we can go to the assets panel and you'll see that uh, 
uh, there's um, a section of icons here that I've already pre-included as part of my design system. Uh, and we're gonna resize this because that looks a little bit too large here. Just going down to 16 pixels should be good. We're gonna be pairing this with some body small label text for our um, input field label. And that has a height of 20 pixels. Then change that to body small stronger there. Um, and I think the 16 fits that a little bit better. Cool. So now if I, I go back to the layers panel, we will see that we have our little tooltip and our tooltip icon here. Um, and change this to label so we don't forget. We'll come back to that. Um, but now what we can do is actually create a frame around these. And we actually don't want to create an auto layout frame because what we want to do is be able to resize the frame that we'll make um, so that the size is 16 by 16. And then we'll go ahead and click the constraints there. And we want this frame around both of these elements to be the same size as this tooltip icon. So we'll select that and use the alignment tools to align it to the left and to the top of its parent frame here. So now we can see that it does indeed fill up that frame. We'll go ahead and select our tooltip and begin to align all of this as well. Um, and then we'll just bump it up another 20 pixels and that should get it about four pixels and or three pixels and change, uh, which I think is fine for this uh, tutorial here. So now we have our little frame um, that has some clipping content availability there, which uh, lets you know that the tooltip is a part of this frame still. It's just not taking up any space as we can see the bounding boxes here. So we're gonna go ahead and create one more frame around this. And this is the frame that we will turn into a component. Uh, so we can do that by clicking up here um, and creating that component. So now if we expand this frame five, we can rename it to say, tooltip trigger, perfect. Um, and now we'll see that this is 16 pixels tall and that the label is 20 pixels tall. And I want these to be aligned to the top when we combine them later. So we're actually gonna create another frame so that they're the same height, that way they can be remain aligned to the top. So on this tooltip trigger, we're gonna add auto layout and then we will um, add two pixels of padding on the top, two on the bottom, and that makes it so that it resolves to 20 pixels there. So again, I kind of use this auto layout to fake like margin and padding as you might in CSS. Um, and so now they're perfectly aligned. If we created an auto uh, layout frame around that and they're aligned to the top, we can see that it pushes it. And then if the text continues to grow there, it still remains aligned on the top, which is kind of what I want for this. Cool, so we're gonna actually undo that because that's gonna come in a later video when we actually go to make our input fields. Um, but now what we wanna do is actually make a duplicate of this. So once we have that, we will detach it and then we'll come back and make a component out of it. And the reason we did that was so that we could have two instances or two components that are the same and then be able to combine them as variants. So now I'm gonna do an auto layout that's vertical, add some space between elements here, um, just so we can see things a little bit better. And all that really does here, um, it's strictly for the um, for the actual component variant, it doesn't affect our components at all. It's just so that we can see these a little better. So now when we select our variant here, um, we'll see that we can name this first property here and we're just gonna call it visible. And then when we come in and select this first um, variant, we'll give the visible property a value of false because this is the one that's gonna have the tooltip hidden um, and it will be the default one. Then we'll select the next one and give it a value of true. 
So now once we've done that, we'll see that if we uh, drag an instance out of this, that suddenly that true false has created a toggle. Um, and so that's something that's really cool about Figma. They recognize Boolean values like true, false, yes, no, or on off, and automatically generate a toggle for us, which makes it super easy to click. Right, so, so far nothing's really happening uh, because again, both of these are the same. Um, so what we will do is actually come back in here and just command click into there so we can drill down a little bit easier and select our tooltip instance. Um, and we're actually gonna turn the visibility off. So now we can see if I come back out here and toggle the visibility, we have a working tooltip um, that still keeps the bounding box the same regardless of the content within it. Cool, so the next thing we actually wanna do is um, come back and select that tooltip and this one here, and we'll just pin it to the bottom and then to the center there, just to make sure that it grows properly. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is, I don't know if you can tell when I command click into here, it's drilling all the way down into the icon, and that's gonna make it hard for us to work with later. And then we actually want to lock those. So once they're both locked, we'll see that we can come back over here and command click, oh, but nothing's happening. So what we need to do is make this top level uh, frame of our components um, selectable. And one way to do that is to give it a transparent um, fill. So I have created this little transparent color style that we just apply to the top level of our component. Now we can command click um, and come right into uh, the top level of the tooltip, which gives us the uh, variant option there. And then we can toggle it. The next thing we wanna do is just come back over here and reselect these info icons. And I actually wanna turn these blue, just so they draw a little bit more attention in our form. Um, and you know, I think something's missing here. So we'll go back to our tooltip uh, demo master component and we'll just adjust some of the styling. We're gonna give this a drop shadow of high since it's gonna sit above all other content. And then we'll change the fill here of the background to be white. And then we have the finish style tooltip here, uh, which as we can see, when we type, it grows exactly how we want um, without affecting the auto layout of any parent frame that it's in. So this is the end of this part of the tutorial. I will just go ahead and say thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Cool. So again, uh, this is just the first part. In the next video, we're gonna be working on creating the buttons for that form. Uh, that's gonna be followed by um, a video for creating the inputs. And then finally, the fourth video is when we'll have fun just putting all of this stuff together. Please let me know if uh, this was helpful, if you learned something. Um, leave any comments or feedback, any questions you might have, and I'll try to get back to it as soon as I can. Thanks, see you next time.